yo, yo, what's up, everybody? We are here live from Vegas. I'm here with Alex Panda Pants and Ryan. I make nothing but clips, Edwards. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, we need to traditionally, because I got Instagram going on here. So, the people oh. on Instagram, uh, oh. if you want to see a better angle, uh, why don't you shoot over to <laughs> Xavier's YouTube? YouTube backslash Xavier Spade. Or you could take the you could have a drink I have to do, the, I have to do the traditional pour, the beer in the wine glass. <laughs> So we're going to do that right now. And I notice how I'm going to try to get uh, about an inch of foam on top over here. All right. So there we go. And then I, I sort of measure it. Good. Good. I'll let that sit for a bit. And let that sit for a bit. And you didn't even offer us a drink. No, no, no drink. Okay. I had one left, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea really planned in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just come over. I got one beer. I got a beer. <laughs> well, I had a few, but then I heard you were coming, so I, I drank so it. You drank some. I mean, maybe it, was, maybe it was a subconscious thing where I was like, yeah, come over and just drink it. I drank it really fast. You had to get prepped for us to come. Yeah. All right. So, in the meantime... I see people talking in chat. I'm actually going to make the chat window just a little bit bigger for you guys. So. I'm with JB. All right. Yeah. What happened? Frenchie McFrenchersons are on. Oh, thanks for the subscription, Carlos de Jesus. That's a long name. Man dating Daniel name. Garcia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we got this whole setup here. If you guys want to check that out, this would be cool. because Pretty intense setup for a live video. It is, right? It's crazy. We got this here, which is totally awesome. I don't know. It's like we're on a radio show right there. <laughs> I, now, I now know Xavier's dedication to this. putting out a live video. Got this. It's pretty hardcore. Like right? That. And then pretty we got the light set up right there. So that's cool. And then we have the director and the makeup artist. She's the makeup artist over here. This is director making Only sure one person needed right makeup. <laughs> I mean, Only who, one person needed makeup. Who put on makeup to do a, <laughs> to do a live YouTube video? Yeah. Only one person I, needed makeup. So and yeah. then wore sunglasses over the makeup he did. <laughs> well, look at this light setup that we got. And I'm tired from Magic Live, so let's talk about Magic Live while we're uh, at it. All right, we talk about Magic Live. Uh, Magic Live happened. Yeah, Magic Live did happen. So that was super, like, honestly, it was probably my favorite convention that I've been to this year. Um, really? Yeah, I mean, one of the best that I've had, like, jam-wise, or at least hanging out with friends and everything, was uh, the session, and that was maybe three or four years ago. I remember I had six hours of sleep and three nights. It's a long time for a convention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and that was really fun, but then this one, I mean, Magic Live is always hit or miss, at, at least for me. Xavier, what time did we get in the other night from jamming? Seven. Uh, it was eight a.m. Eight a.m. Eight a.m. Eight a.m. It was eight Canada time. Pan, pan, no, it's just <laughs> yeah. It was eleven a.m. Canadian time. We got in. Uh, thanks for the things. subscription, Edwin. Pandre, he went to bed at like midnight that night. Eh? He, just, uh, he always he's does. Out. He's like, he I'm tired, guys. Tired. I'm pretty tired. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> Left. <laughs> he always tends to do that. Yeah. Just look over. Oh, what? Pandre, you're I'm a ghost, always like bro. the last. No, maybe, <laughs> maybe in like all of Nevada, but at the convention, you're like the first one to leave. No, that's not true. I'm gonna go play poker. Yo, <laughs> yeah, I did not play poker once this whole time. I did play roulette though. Mir Garcia were on a roll that time. Yep. That's what we got here. So somebody said something about. Uh, did you did, actually? Did you guys see Jay Sankey's comment about cardistry? No. I saw somebody post something about it. Um, Let's say? look at it right now. And uh, I think it'd be a good thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. Really stir up the uh, controversy. So this he like said... A, it's like a radio show. It is. That. I love it. <laughs> so he said, so tired of the vapid card juggling videos. Definitely not magic. Not even about connecting or entertaining. Glorified fidget spinning. So my response was, saying cardistry isn't like magic is like saying cooking isn't magic. Of course it isn't. It's Boom. it's totally different. That's yes. a good response. Yeah, you know, it's its own thing. It's its own thing. When I read that, I automatically thought one of the first Jay Sankey videos that I watched had one of his 
he was doing a butterfly cut flourish thingy, you know, where you do like a double charlier and then reverse that one. I can't do it. But this was literally what Jay Shank Sankey taught me first. Oh, oh like the magic used, is happening. Yeah, get it up high so everybody's oh. that and then... And then he go, but straight into it, right? Because Jay Sankey's smooth AF. So you do this, this, AF. and then He's whatever so comes around this way. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty slick. Yeah. Right? And I didn't, there was no cardistry at the time or any of that stuff. So it's kind of weird, like, he changed his vibe on that. Are you going to how to do it? No, I'm oh, just going to okay. do the pass. <laughs> oh, okay. You mean just hold the deck and stand still? Yeah. <laughs> or in your case. Well, you're scratching a record, isn't he? Like, well, the way that I used to get away with the brick pass was hit him in the face with a brick. And you just do whatever you want after that. Guys, but, I fooled both of these guys the other day. I told them to watch me do my the pass. The camera's up there. There we go. Uh, sorry, I'm down <laughs> I don't here. know which I'm camera to look here. at. Here. Microphone here, there. video here, here. Alex okay. Rangel is guys, in the house. I fooled both of these guys with my pass the other day. You see, I had them set up. I told them I was practicing my pass. And then I said... But that guy over there does a sicker pass. And they both looked, and they just cut can the we just Can we just talk about the, the card cards. clip that you gave me? Because it didn't come in a box. <laughs> so I bought a clip from Ryan Edwards. This was before I had boxes. This no, was it wasn't. Time ago. No, because everybody yeah. else at the same convention had a box. You just gave me no. mine with Doritos on it. <laughs> I, I don't even eat Doritos. Well, you did. <laughs> that day. <laughs> I'm just going to send you a box in the mail. Just a box. Uh, Matt Cruz said, yo, Pandrea, you followed me on Instagram, but quickly unfollowed me. What gives, man? <laughs> Bro. What gives? No huh? love for his followers there. He's, he's, play, he's playing the old numbers game. Yeah. Oh, hey, if I like them back, they'll extra, extra like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. I think, I mean, if content's good, like, I just keep following. I'm not saying that it's not good, but, like, impress me. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's. That was rough. So yeah. That, that was pretty rough. Pandrea, down one follower. <laughs> uh, <laughs> follower one, Pandrea zero. Let's, let's zoom in on Pandrea and see why he's being so mean. I don't think the makeup works, bro. What? You don't think I look good right now? <laughs> well, let's go back to the full shot. That was terrible. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look at these comments like on an angle. That's yeah, you like that, right? Mm -hmm. Do they see that as well? That well, this is what they're seeing. That, oh, okay. Yeah. If Xavier is, and Alex what? had a classic bat, pass like battle, this part. who would win? Live from Las Vegas. Yeah. Right? Classic it's pass really battle. Obviously, classic. I would. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Uh, what do you do? You like Evan Era? No, I don't. Actually, you know, do you know who's at the convention? I don't know if you know who this is. Um, oh, what's this kid's name? He does all these crazy YouTube videos where people are standing behind him while he's uh, exposing the effect to them, but they react. Oh, that Julius? Julius. Julius, Julius Dean. Dean. He was there. Yeah. So I didn't say too much about it because I don't know the guy. I just don't like what he does. But then I got a message today from somebody on Facebook, and they sent me a clip of Jabrizi. Okay, I swear to you. Is Jabrizi too cool to come to Magic Live? Like, he'll get kicked I was out. expecting to see him. He'll, get, he'll just get kicked out. Check this out. So this is him messing up the trick and then going, now here's how you react. film a video like this on the Vegas Strip. We yeah. do. We literally have to go do a, doing the work, like having it look, like, pick tricks that look the worst from behind. Yeah, yeah. Like the worst. Just a snap change. No, like, not like, yeah. like, 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 like a straight, straight up, up bill change. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, bill change would be good too. Really get the, t the thumb right But Julius there. Dean did the worst one. He did the, the baguette production. He yeah. literally sat there like this and pulled the baguette out, and the woman freaked out because there was no more baguette left in the hand. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it was really. So, what do you think about that kind of ma like? Because magic has gone from, on the internet at least, right nowadays, magic has gone from, I'm gonna perform like street magic, right, like legit street magic, and it kind of, 
gone back and forth for like more of a formal performance but now it's back to like straight up street magic but in a different way of like five second videos mm -hmm. so what do you think of that is, is that, that good for magic is that thing. bad for magic i don't think it's good or bad for magic man Ma you know magic on instagram let's say right is totally different than magic on tv and magic in movies and that's totally different from magic in real life and that's totally different from magic on a stage you know what I mean? They each have their own limitations. They each have their own strengths, their own weaknesses. But to say that one isn't magic more than the other, I mean, more people are seeing magic on Instagram than they ever have before. Here, here's a question. Do you think magic on one platform can hinder magic on another? No. I, see, I would disagree. Well, I mean, I think now that like these videos are getting like literally hundreds of millions of views, right? So their expectation of magic is... Show me something so I could freak out. Yeah. Right? So my approach to magic, at, at least in the last couple of years, has totally strayed away from all of that. And I want more of uh, an emotion in here rather than, ah. Right? And maybe that's just Pretty me. Sure. And it, that's not for everybody. People want really. So I'm trying to stray away from that. So I kind of feel like, you know how you say, oh, exposure on, on, on YouTube, right? Of, of magic effects um, is not going to affect your when you perform for people your audience yeah. right probably not because there's not people actively but now with people sharing and hundreds of millions of views now chances are that you might get a spectator that have seen this type of yeah video. I, just, I just remember working at a restaurant i don't know 15 years ago or something when chris angel first came out and he did like the card in the head in the head. In the head. Where in he, it. Where he cut the guy's head open. Wasn't that from the, the movie? What was that movie? Burt Wonderstone? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he drilled himself <laughs> in the head over there, yeah. So, but... No, he didn't. But, yeah. Is this true? No, he drills himself uh, in the head in that movie. But so Chris did a trick where he cuts the guy's head open and pulls the card out. And I remember being at the restaurant working... And I'm doing some tough close-up magic. And this guy is like... This family was like... Hey, that that was crazy. But we saw Chris Angel pull a card out of someone's head. Can you do that? <laughs> and and I was like, Well, you, you know, really believe everything you see on TV, you know. Well, and you, and as a magician, you don't want to say that. I'll get to your but question in a second, Alex. Alex has a question, so go on with okay. your thought. But but that's just it, right? Like how? Okay, you. If you ever meet an actor who acts on movies and stuff, yeah. right? Do you ever go, well, I've seen you in movies, but can you act on Broadway? Why? No, no you don't, no, right? No, 100%. So but people the, expect magic. Nah, I don't give a shit I what people expect. on different no, levels man. to be the same thing. Fuck that. I don't care what they think. But that's what that's I'm saying. A, but it's that's our job saying. to determine what it is they're getting. But that's what I'm saying. Them. Does it... Change, does it change the way people look at different platforms? So, like that person watched TV... And then when they saw Magic close up live, they expected that that was going to be able to happen. Listen, when you listen to T Pain and he's there auto tuning himself, you don't yeah. expect him to go on an acapella song and sing live. You know what I mean? Like no, no, of course. I not. mean, well, truthfully, you you hope that they could do that. But if you know <laughs> that they couldn't, you know, like you expect Why when don't you, you sound like that. <laughs> you expect when you hear someone sing that they're a good singer. Like, if they have a re recording contract, you expect they're going to be a good singer. Like, right. you buy tickets to go see their show, and Maybe. then they sound 100%, like... 100%, because I've seen people sing live that are shit, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's a huge letdown, right? And, and so. then that's the, that's the other thing. Like, I went to see, like, I'll give an example, Celine Dion, right? Yeah. Whether you like her or not, I like her. I personally like her. And when she sings live... He cried. He's so <laughs> crying. Made a world <laughs> That's why he was crying. He was crying when he came in. That's why he had the glasses on. So, like, th right there, I think she sings better live than she does, like, when I listen to her, right? Because yeah. there's, like, the whole emotion well, behind it. There's the, yeah. there's the show and there's the actual... But now, people nowadays, they just... They do that, and then when they're live, you know, you've seen so many people go, um, oh, can you do this thing that I saw on video? And, right, your response yeah. to that is, well, you know, I'll show you something different. Yeah. Um, so, really quickly, Alex Rangel, our buddy, says, how do you feel about magic for likes and shares? So, do you, we I guess were literally the, just talking about that. Yeah, so, so the objective of doing magic is to get likes, to get shares, and that's, I guess, the only reason you're doing it. So, yeah. Alex, I'm actually going to send you the video clip that I got sent, because it was pretty funny. It was literally a shot of Jabrizi coaching the people around him how to react when he says the word BAM, because they're not going to see the effect. <laughs> 
<laughs> or they'll just see how it works. You so, know, it's but, not so do you have a do you have an issue though with that? I like, do. I have a very big issue. Because now and it's it's the same issue that I have with Jabrizi and Jules Dean and Evan Era and Rick Lax. It all it's all across the same plane. But I hold Rick Lax in a different regard. And the the, the difference is I don't know Jules Dean. He might be a good magician, he might be a shitty magician. From what I've seen, he's shitty. Evan Era is shitty. Uh, Jabrizi shouldn't do anything. He should just go away. Stop doing magic, please. Don't call yourself a magician. You're not the hip-hop magician. You're not even hip-hop. You, you don't live in Chicago. You're a liar. You're horrible. And, Jabrizi, you're not the only black magician. He goes on a radio show and says he's the only black magician, and then the next day takes a picture with Marcus Eddy. So apparently Marcus wasn't there. It was a lie. You know? I see. I now, try not to now, follow all this. Stuff. But the thing is, it's Rick really... Lax has the ability to do good yeah. magic. Rick, he just Rick chooses a, to Rick do shitty, a, shitty magic. I, I can't say anything bad about Rick though, because he, he's Rick is a super nice guy first. But and and he did set the doorway for a lot of magicians to get known with stuff like Wizard Wars, and stuff. That's which great. Which is great. But he's definitely found his niche in our in our field uh, with his YouTube videos. Uh, see, I think it's okay. If, like if you figured out a niche, but you're not saying to people like with the video we just watched, react this way, mm -hmm. so that I look good. That's you know I I disagree with that 100 percent. But if Rick is doing something and people are liking it, you know I understand every magician wants to see good magic, but his those videos aren't for us to watch. No. You know, uh, so I find it hard to critique something when, when we're not the audience for it. Well, I'm not. Cr well, no, bullshit, uh, bullshit, absolute bullshit. Because let me ask you this, right? Who critiques high-end movie productions? Is it lay audiences or is it other people well, in the industry? But no, most no, no, time, no, no. So if you go to Rotten Tomatoes or something like that, yeah. and you listen to critics, critics are a bunch of random people. But that's right, not what I'm talking about. All right, so let's take it. At, let's say I'm a chef because I, I like food, right? No, no, no. But this is serious, right? Uh, yeah, you like yeah, food too. Me too. <laughs> right? Me too. Like food more than I know. All I need of to eat soon. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. But but seriously, right? I'm a chef. I want to learn how to cook. Do yeah. I go and I just ask people if they like what I'm cooking, or do I go to cooking school and other no, cooks teach you, me how to cook? But you would look. You would get a cookbook or something. No, like no, that. no, no, you're no. no. You're not going to be a chef by buying a cookbook. But you're you got to learn. But you're asking for professional help. He's not teaching magic, and he's not. Like, if he was teaching, magic... I'm not talking about teaching magic. I'm talking about look. If you want to be a magician, you mm -hmm. have to learn certain things, right? You yeah, want to be a cook, you have to learn cook. certain things, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you want to learn how to cook, do you just go to random people in the street and say, "Teach me how to make a filet mignon"? No. No, no but you you, go what to you would school. do, but no, okay, let's like what you would do is invite people over for dinner, cook for them, right? You don't need to go straight up into a professional. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not things. saying that you need to go straight up into it. What I'm saying is, as someone who wants to be a professional, Rick Lax is a professional. Let's cut the shit. He's a professional. He knows the business. He knows magic. But he's choosing to do shit on his ch on, on Facebook. Let's be real. He has the ability to do good magic, and he has the audience to do good magic too. But instead, he'll dumb it back, and he'll uh, like you know he found a formula that works. Fine. You want to yeah. if that's what you want to do, then be a marketer. Don't be a magician. That's my point. Okay, because when I want to... There's a lot of really well-known magicians mm -hmm. who are really bad magicians. I'm um, not disagreeing with yeah. you. Uh, but I, so for me, I think people aren't going to go to Rick from his videos and be like, I want to be a magician, teach me everything. And I think if he said, if they said, teach me everything you know, I don't think Rick is going to go, okay, let's start with YouTube videos and do this. You know what I mean? So, like, my thought of it is that magic is so weird is that you can actually look like you know what you're doing without really knowing. Like, if you can't sing, you can't sing. That's it. Yeah. Right? Well, unless you have auto-tune and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. T-Pain did it. <laughs> um, but, you know, you could go out to the store, buy a $20 trick, yeah. and look like a literally a well, miracle worker. I mean, there would be people nowadays that know three tricks that work restaurants. Sponge balls, maybe an ambitious card, and, and some other, you know, over-the-counter bot trick who are working restaurants nonstop around the world. 
you know, uh, and would you say that they're a professional magician and should people go to them? You know, I find it tough. Like It is tough, and that's yeah. because there's no bottom line. Alvin, no, says, true. Alvin says there's a lot of gray area between what magicians consider good magic and what the average audience considers good magic. Yeah, but you I know, do, but I, you I see, will say this. I will say this. I, I will say that most people have never seen magic exactly. live. So, yes, we want their, when they see something live, to be awesome. You know, they want, you want to give them an experience. Uh, like Alex said, like that, where they feel it, like that expression. To me, I would, I respect Rick more than I do those, uh, the, definitely more than the other guys who are basically buying people to react to magic. Mm -hmm. uh, at least he's doing it to a screen and then letting his audience react exactly how they feel. You right. know what I mean? Where these other guys that are saying, here, I'll, I'll give you 50 bucks or whatever, just freak out, do this. Right. That's not magic to me. That's, you know, that's creating a camera, um, I don't know, a camera show, I yeah, guess you could I, say. Yeah, yeah. But to me, you know, that to me is damaging the art more than just someone, like, like I said, I'm not going to critique someone's magic. I haven't watched all the videos. Like I said, I try not to stay up on that stuff because I want to do my own thing and not be influenced by other stuff. Um, but I respect that more. Even if you're doing a bad trick or you're dumbing it down, I respect that more than telling your audience to react so that your trick looks good. I agree with Or that you. you look better. I also don't think there out. exists just luck with being successful in any field. I think that, you know, how people bitch about Chris Angel, right? He's still got to where he is 100%. by working. So it 100%. really doesn't matter, like, you know, Rick Lax had to create or or at least film and sketch out how many videos. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Probably hundreds now, right? So um, I just think that, that that goes to saying something about them, even though if they're not good magicians 100%. by our standards or whatever. You know, I don't particularly like um, all the, you know, the videos, right? Uh, yeah. No, but, and that's why I said, uh, like... But you can't really argue to that, right? No. You can't say... And that's why I said, there's still work on every level that's put in. Even with the other guys, you know, that are uh, asking spectators to react to their tricks, there's still work and thought that has to go into it. I, I just mean, I don't, I don't like that idea. I think you should be getting real stuff, you know, like... That, and maybe that's why I stick to theater shows and stuff now is because to me it's live, right? People are seeing it and experiencing it. Mm -hmm. uh, social, yeah. social media is to magic as auto-tune is to um, music, I guess you wanted to say. Mm. I don't know. That's a tough, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, I would agree to that, though. Well, I would say editing software on your computer to uh to make tricks so, look better so, okay so things. then so then how about adding visual effects to a scene to make a shot look better in a show but if you so see that, you that so, so here's the thing right like if i do a live show you for, know, I'm for, but no 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 for, for, i don't give a shit look let's 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 understand something you cannot say instagram youtube television and live show in the same sentence they're completely separate for sure Right, so if I don't but care if what you're doing, it's all a spectrum of magic. No, it, yes, yes, it is in a spectrum of magic. Yes, but and so is acting in real life and acting in a movie with special effects and all this other stuff. That's in the same but spectrum of acting. So if you is, can put, so if you can we put, see a movie, we know that there's special effects. They're not selling us on not special effects. They're not trying to no, that, fool us because we already know it's that's about acceptable. it's about the experience. Yeah, 100%. it's about the experience. But so if you can give a good experience on Instagram, YouTube, television, it doesn't matter if you use special effects or not, as long as you're not trying to say that this is who I am outside of this. But that's what I'm saying. I, I think that people that are using it, like the video we just watched, are using it incorrectly. Correct? Oh, absolutely. So that's what I'm saying, is that, yeah, it is the auto-tune of of the magic world because we have these people that are doing these you know 30 second videos looking like a rock star that you know when they go out to actually do something can't like alex said before like hey can you show me that trick you did on a video and they're like uh well here no i'll show you something else but that's you okay know? i'm okay with that so you don't think that if you do something uh, you know i had a talk uh, anthony owen uh 
really smart guy and stuff. I had a talk with him because I worked on a TV show with him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, some of the stuff is for TV. Mm -hmm. And I said, ethically, what is your look on this? And he said, as long as we could recreate what happened here live, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, but let's be real. I think that's so real. So, okay, but you, you consult. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever consulted? Um, yes. Okay. So we know that when it comes to television, there are some things that, yes, you can recreate. But let's look at Blaine for a minute, right? Blaine does a levitation where he's lifted off the ground X number of feet that he cannot do in the real world. You can try to recreate a minimalistic part of it, yep. but realistically, it's nowhere close, right? No. Okay. I so if somebody said, let me see that live, what would he have to say? He can't, yeah. right? Yeah. Does that make it wrong that he did it on TV? If people still had the feeling that came across from think, the effect? I feel like he could still do the Balducci levitation mm -hmm. or some, uh, another levitation um, and give that person the same feeling. It may not be a foot or two feet or three feet off the ground, but mm -hmm. there would be a way to do it. Or, you know, you could create an illusion. He would have to create some type of illusion that was able to do that. So... Could, could he do it live and give the audience the same feeling? Yes. But does he have to do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, me, but do if you, we're but hanging out. Do you out, think that it, it hindered magic? Because, uh, and Alex, you should answer this too, is after Blaine and Angel levitated, every time you did a card trick for someone, did they say, but can you levitate? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I was, Sometimes. I was super a young, lot of but time. I was doing my shitty card tricks when I was like 13, right, at yeah. that time. And yeah, I used to hear that. You hear it all the time. Yeah, but did that it, happens with it, everything. Did it if damage you... magic for for regular people. I no, think no, no, because like honestly, Absolutely. I remember being super young and doing like the glide, yeah. right? And people freaking out about that. Yeah. And comparing that to what they saw like David Blaine do on TV, and it was like at an equal sort of level. Yeah, yeah. Of... for sure. But I'm saying like I don't know how many times I've heard over my career, like the last I don't know, 17, 18 years. That was crazy. Oh, can you levitate? Yeah, but that and doesn't ruin magic. It just means somebody no, no. wants to see something. But that's what I'm saying. You know, like, can, I, I mean, listen, I've had people go, hey, remember that thing in, I, in My Cousin Vinny? People yeah. have asked, that, he wasn't a magician. He did a shot where he did a stupid ditch. Yeah. Right? But people still wanted to see that. Did that ruin magic? No, no, no I'm, not saying it, I'm not saying it ruined magic, but it... it I think it adds that hindrance to people then that are performing live. I don't think so. If you so. can't do anything, if you can't do I th it, I don't think so. Okay, but it, so but it, is, it depends on it depends on the situation. So if someone says to you, Xavier, levitate. No. That's your answer. Yeah. Hold out. I, I no. <laughs> wow. Have you been around me when I just flat out deny people magic? I don't know. <laughs> I have. Yeah. I've been there when I do it. And let me yeah. tell you something. A lot of times, if I'm hanging out with people, yeah. and somebody comes over and says, "Hey, let me see, let me see magic," my cards go in the case, and my case goes in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. I don't sit there and play that game. I'm not doing magic for them. I'm doing magic because I want to do it. For, oh, hundred percent. So if somebody comes 100%. up to me and says, "Hey, I want to see that trick," go look for it. What do you want from me? <laughs> I don't feel like doing it. Yeah, I'm not their no, no. slave. No, for sure. I know. I'm all I'm saying is, like when Blaine did it, Blaine, Blaine could recreate it. But at the time, and then like with Angel and he did it. Yes, you could recreate that. So, and I, but I actually did used to do the Balducci levitation. Yeah, like like yeah. when I would get the request of it. For right? sure. For I sure. would definitely do yeah, it. Yeah, it's an easy way to do it. Um, so, But here's the thing. is If there is absolutely no way to recreate what they've created on camera, and it's not a movie. Like I said, right. I think people, when they watch a movie, understand that they are creating a movie. When someone does a magic trick on video, I don't know how many times I've had people send me a video that they've seen on YouTube and are like, hey, this is cool, can you do this? And I've watched a video and went, wow, it's editing tricks or it's stooges and stuff. If I can't recreate that live or the person that does that video can't recreate it live, do you think that's an issue? You no. don't. See, I think ethically you should be able to recreate everything live. I don't. I, it may not have to be the same method, it may, but you, as long as in the end it looks somewhat similar. But some, some things you just can't. You know, there's a reason why gimmicks are made, because sleight of hand just can't do certain things. There's a reason why you have sleight a gimmick, of hand... You could do it live. Not necessarily. Look, like, look, let's be real. Yif 
was the king of CGI. Yeah. yeah. Right? So and I, then he tried to recreate the shit. He yeah, did but that's, but that's and what it I'm was saying. terrible. That's what I'm saying. Is like that, when you lead people on to say, like, when people go, Yif is the greatest magician alive, did you see all of his videos? And then you watch the guy live and he can't do those things. What does that do for magic? He's they an go, act. That, but go, but it is what it is. is. Not real. But it is what it right? is, man. What he is is he is a. But that's on him, right? It's on it, him. It, but, but do you think that's hindering? No. Like, I for me, I think if someone then sees Yif live and goes, "That was terrible," and that's the best guy. Then I've Yif seen, should not be doing up, live shows. One hundred percent. But if they see him and go. He's the greatest magician I've seen on, on YouTube or whatever, and now I've seen him live and he's terrible. Does that hinder them to going and seeing other shows then? Or seeing any magicians? A hundred percent. I don't think so. I think if a, a bad magician goes somewhere, if I'm booking gigs at home mm -hmm. and I'm booking a gig and I find out some terrible magician did the show years ago or something. Well, that's a great for me that they're calling me now. But I also know that there's people that will do a gig and do it bad, and that company go, well, we're never going to hire a magician again. But but that no, 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 no. But that's, that, no, that does not hinder you. What hinders you is your inability to market yourself a certain way. Because let's be real. I've had I some didn't... shitty food in my day, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to go buy a chicken sandwich when I'm hungry. Okay, that's just because so, somebody, so no, 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 it's the same thing. So just because you had one bad experience with something does not mean that that now ruins it for everybody. So, well, no, I can, I can see, like, if I had a bad experience with a whatever place, at, at a certain place, mm -hmm. right? Let's say it's that theater, right? And if we're going to talk about food at a certain restaurant, I probably won't go back there. Yeah, like but, it's but it's a, not going to stop you from eating so, that food again. But hang on. Even so if they say we have a new chef. See, let's see it this right? way. Let's no, see it this but... Way. Listen, so let's say, but, that's, but that's the same as saying, you know, I, I went to McDonald's and I got food poisoning, right? So you're not going to go to that McDonald's, but are you not going to go to Burger King and get a burger? Are you not going to get one from a restaurant? That's different. No, so it's that's not. Like saying, you're yes, getting, it you're still no, getting no, no. a burger. No, no, no. But that would be like, so let's say all entertainers are, or all magicians are McDonald's. No, and, you can't do you that. Buy, no. Yes, you can. But if you get food poisoning at one and you go, I'm never eating McDonald's that's, again. No, man, you can't that, say Burger King. Burger King is something different. No, that's not that's not a fair analogy. It, it's not a fair analogy. No. Is not fair. Yes, it is. No, it's not. My analogy is magicians are a dime a dozen. That's my analogy. I Maybe, but and I wouldn't most, say good and, magicians. And most magicians are, are shit. Yes, yeah, they I are. Say good and and, and if most dozen. magicians are shit and magicians are a dime a dozen and you're still getting gigs, you're, what you're saying doesn't make sense. No, what I'm saying <laughs> is that people that do bad shows, I think there, I think there's no hundred. I, 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 I agree on with Ryan at this point. If somebody hires a terrible magician, mm -hmm. right, just like makes fun of people and does this, this, and this, and um, then Ryan is there talking to somebody, right? And oh, we have the Christmas party coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Now this guy has the preconceived notion of what magic at the party would be, yeah. based off of somebody terrible. And probably won't hire Ryan's a super nice guy, but won't hire him because he just doesn't want to have the experience. Won't take the chance to have the same experience he had last time. Let's just mm -hmm. say. And I mean, that's a very rare occasion because I I even feel like even bad magicians go and walk around gigs or at restaurant sure. stuff. They will still entertain at some level of doing some double lift, right, or sponge right. balls or something. And people sure. will ultimately have a good sure. time. Yep. Right. I'm so, just saying, on a on a large scale, it could that could happen. Right. No, you know I I get you, but but, and but I'm saying most people, like we agreed before, most mm -hmm. people have never seen magic live. Yes. So when they do have a terrible experience, it's much harder for them, especially if they're paying money to go and see something, to go and see another magician. You know, even if uh, people still know, talking about Jay Sanky on here. Even if, even if people Alini's like on. think oh, okay, like, on there. my Romanian brother. <laughs> no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Is Rogue still I, open? No, Rogue is closed down. Alini, where are you at? The, the only reason why I'm saying that what, and disagreeing with you is because there are so many you bad magicians. You always disagree with me. Because you're <laughs> always wrong. I'm never wrong. <laughs> I'm always right. <laughs> no, but um, think about it. If There are so many, so many bad magicians out there. Yeah. How yeah, are you still them. getting gigs? Well, because they're not going everywhere that I go. That's they're not, not getting called for the same level. No, I think, I, think, I, think, I think there are bad magicians out there from our 
our yeah. viewpoint, of course, yeah. right? Because we're so awesome, right? <laughs> uh, but no, there are horrible, uh, tacky, yeah. clowning sort of whatever. But people like it, right? So at the end of the day, what can you really say to that? Oh, he came up to me at this restaurant. It was so fun. Like I had such a good time. Well, and then, and then, ninety percent of the time, they have no idea what they did anyway. Oh, we saw a magician. He was great. He was funny. Yeah. Right. I'm and just I'm just saying on the extreme. And the level, funny it's, part it's was probably some corny bad. magician jokes, right? Um, but the thing okay, is so the, Randy DeMarco, who, who's I, 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 he's a good friend of mine. Uh, people know there are bad magicians and good magicians. This is an argument magicians always have, but it does not fly in the real world. He's your friend. I don't even know what. Doesn't but but what does that mean? Doesn't count. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? What, what is the real world? Everything is the real world. Yeah. I don't like real world. I don't like real people. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm a real person too. You are? No. Let me see. No, I'm Can CGI. I just touch you? Dude, wrong Can computer. I touch you, no, please? the CGI. <laughs> I, but I get what he's saying. But you know, these it's it's not about. I think we all. I think we all made good and bad. Maybe well, you more bad, but um, points than <laughs> about I this made topic. Amazing points. <laughs> Come um, on, man. No, but like I said, I think it's like if you go back to the singing thing. Like if I'm paying an artist to go see their concert, I want to see them sing first. And I want to hear that they're a good singer. You because, ever been to a because, gorilla's concert? Because, no, but see, I'm, I'm not like if I'm going to say I'm a singer and I'm not a good singer, then I'm not going to put myself out there to sing, right? These people put themselves out there. Do you know there. who the gorillas are? I know who the gorillas are. Interesting how people would go and pay to see a CGI concert. Yeah, yeah. But that's but that's the thing, right? Is like, would you feel ripped off if you paid? No, you know why? There's a whole trend of no. Listen, you ever heard of baby metal? No. Oh my God, it's a group. It's like a Japanese thing where it's baby death metal and all this stuff, and they have these girls on there, and they're literally just baby death metal. Yeah, yeah. What the hell is baby death metal? Right, but check it out. The girls are all lip syncing, and they switch the girls in and out like mid tour. Yeah. But people still go for the experience. They're not going necessarily see, for people, the great but music. But if people know that that's what's happening, then I think that's okay. It, it came but, out that that's what happened, but, but that's not necessarily But what if you're meant. selling it as these people are singing, uh, then I, I feel like that's okay. What's the definition of a good and bad magician? Bad magician Jabrizi? Good <laughs> magician most other people. <laughs> Um, what is the name of this <laughs> movie? <laughs> Judo Flip? Judo, Judo, Judo Flip. flip? Yeah. Judo Flip. Franco Pascali. That guy's a beast. He is a beast. He's a beast. Good kid, too. He's, he's, very, <laughs> he's, he's like you, though. Well, maybe worse than you. He's very just... He just says it what he thinks sometimes. Yeah, he uh, does a little I, too much. Too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to pull him aside and be like, bro... <laughs> Just take it easy. Yeah. Don't, don't say everything Ooh, that's on your shit, mind. Shit. Just put yeah. it a little nicer. Yeah, I say what's on my mind about the topic we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but super great kid. Yeah. I actually I want to do some more work with him. So. Um, okay, but isn't that, a, but isn't that up to you as a, the hirer to check out the performer's show reel? Josh Janowski in the house. What up, Josh? I don't. I mean, I don't. Uh, know. So I'll I'll talk to this it, about checking out people's show reels. It uh, it goes on the same thing as I can make myself look incredible on video and cut and do a trick eight hundred times to mm -hmm. make it look good. I can get the right angles on everything, and then go to a show and try to do that effect, and it looks terrible. So it's tough. It's tough. Yes, what what's on your what's on your reel should be real stuff, real footage from shows and stuff. Mm -hmm real critiques but um but it's tough it's tough but you don't always know what you're getting hold on a second well, isn't jabrizi giving in? magic the swag it never had no <laughs> no shut up josh <laughs> go home you're drunk bro he's home already he's home yeah he's Look, home he's stay trying to home. fix his camera that's terrible he's how are you gonna sit there and say D i'm sure he was kidding but i hope so josh well, if probably, I see, if because, I see, <laughs> like, let's be honest, like, knowing Josh like, as well, he's probably allergic to alcohol. So, well, knowing Josh, drunk. I don't think swag is in vo his vocabulary uh -oh. unless he's fucking around. Yeah. Uh -oh. So, <laughs> hey, now even though Josh got a little bit of swag just, going just on with that goatee, cards, I must say. Just about to throw so, check. Here's here's, here's, a, here's an interesting question. Now that you guys are answering questions, have you guys ever Wait, fooled each other? Wait, my friend won one of Jabrizi's swag magic kit giveaways. 
Jabrizi ne- never gave it to him. <laughs> what? Because there was no swag? <laughs> so did the kit come yeah. without... Is the, the swag was missing or the whole kit was missing? Because now we got to call him out. We got to be yeah, like, yo, let's get, him, let's get him his swag kit. Do you have any, ad- sw- you have any advice if I want to try to produce or create malice for myself without buying more? <laughs> what? That's for you. <laughs> he fooled Penn and Teller, though. Yeah, you know who else fooled Actually, Penn and Teller? The question I had was, did he understand the explanation that Penn gave? I don't because know. Because but here, I feel like Listen, not for nothing, here's somebody else who should have not fooled Penn and Teller. David Roth. I'm sorry. <laughs> there, I'm well, sorry. There's a lot. Of, I feel like... 90% of the people that have fooled Penn and Teller, I watch it and go, well, this is how they did it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but then but then I watched, uh, what's this black guy? Uh, he lost his hearing from the UK. Oh. His hearing? Yeah. Classical. Yeah, uh, I know, I know who you're about. talking about. And I can't remember his name. Michael Vincent. Vincent. That's it. So Michael Vincent goes on and does the cleanest yeah. shit that, dude. Yeah, I had no idea. What? And they go, oh yeah, you just did a you know, deck switch better than what you've ever seen. But yeah. then Jabrizi puts a coin in the thing, and David Roth flashes all his stuff, and he's shaking. And, well, and come on. So here, okay, here's a question I have. Here's a question I have because we all know that with fool us, and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. Uh, we all know with fool us that is if you get caught doing one thing, right, that eliminates your whole routine. Correct. Right. So, Shinlim. <laughs> I, I will say Shinlim is very talented, badass with a deck of cards, and he just got engaged. Congratulations! And he got engaged. Congrats. <laughs> Do we have a sound effect that we go? Yeah. Woo! That's it. That's it. That's it right there. You but did. saying that, saying that, like I respect Shinlim for the magic the he's doing. Effect. No doubt about it. It's right. beautiful pieces of art that he's creating. Mm-hmm. But we all know that he's using black art. Yeah. You know, and and Penn and Teller know he's using black art. Mm-hmm. So. If it takes one thing to fool her to be, you know, cut from fooling Penn, Penn and Teller, they don't even have to guess. They just say black art, and he's done. Right. So that's my problem with fool us is it's just become a respect thing, or if they like you, they you right. you fool them, right? Right. Because I've seen some. There's some acts this year that have been insane card tricks and stuff, or other routines, and they just go well and give a very vague overview of what they think it is and out of respect the person says yeah you got me right you know but you know i said like shin lim got them through almost well 35 or 40 million views on his youtube video right Mm -hmm. so that's great for them it's great for the show right so yeah i don't think there would be any doubt that he comes back a second time and not pulls them he did he came back a second time and pulled them um so that's what i'm saying there would be no chance for them for for him to go up there a second time after all that and like yeah because they obviously know now uh, if they didn't know before which i'd find very hard to believe you know the second time there's absolutely no way like 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 look i like shim too but i i think he's amazing i think if magic is going to hurt him the way it does, he should stop doing it. <laughs> like, dude, the it looks like it's killing him. I'm just saying, I love the guy. I don't yeah. want him to be in that much pain. No, I think I think he's a great magician. I just have a hard time believing that people <laughs> yeah. are fooling. Them. So here we go. Uh, have you guys ever fooled each other? If so, who got fooled by the simplest effect? We fool each other all the time. Yeah. We fool each other all the time. It, it, it's it's usually the dumbest things that the fool stupidest us, too. Tricks. Yeah, well, you I said, fooled I, me, bro. Oh, I thought you were a nice guy. Oh. <laughs> oh. Then we started this live cast. And I then never we figured, figured that out. Himself, we figured man. that out, yeah. He fooled himself. He usually wears a shirt. I'm a jerk. <laughs> Actually, I had a shirt on yesterday that says, I hate you. <laughs> nice. And it has a smiley face. Nice. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, there was but another yeah, one. I think magicians fool each so other all the time. Man. Um, that is. But that's the fun part of it. Usually it is with stupid stuff, though. Are right, you ready for this? Yeah. The swag kit contains mind reading and predict anyone's thoughts, vanish small objects in bare hands, a bite coin, pen through bill, autographed by Jabrizzle. The pen is autographed by him? Or the I think he used maybe, the pen maybe, through bill. Maybe it's the bill that's the autograph. So it actually comes with a paper with the pen in it, and it's like signed part of the way. Uh, that would actually be pretty that's cool. That's gonna be cool. So do you know how interesting little fact here? How the double ended pen through bill 
came about. Doug Edwards, mm -hmm. right? He came up with the concept of having the double end on it. Yep. Do you know how? Well, you should have him tell the story. Uh, but it's basically <laughs> from a... So, it's, yeah, it's, yeah it's that is so he, he's done. He, he, uh, yeah, it's just a double-ended dildo that he goes... He looked at it for a while and goes... <laughs> pen through Bill. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> So Thank there you. you go. All right. Then. I hope that's not a real story. Yeah. Well, because I probably he probably had to like switch a dildo in and out every once in a while, and then he decided this relates to magic. So there's just to show you that magic could be. <laughs> it can happen the, anywhere. <laughs> you know, anything can. The be ideas can spark from anything. Oh my goodness. Okay. You have a lot of questions here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Or comments, anyways. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you think about genuine life-threatening effects? Uh, I don't. I have no comment on that. I mean, Card enthusiast says, uh, you're still in Vegas. Awesome. Yep. Actually, I was thinking about doing a meetup on Tuesday. <laughs> the, the magic shop, Sean, there's not really a magic shop here Sean, now. Sean, my buddy like, Sean, he's like, usually, like, no, I know, I know, but usually that's what My buddy Sean, he's like, is Doug Edwards the guy that keeps going to the porno shop down, downstairs from Phantasma? <laughs> not, oh, I'm not going to say that. Uh, oh, that's a lot. What is problem. magic for you guys? That's a good one. Yeah. Magic is a lot. You're, oh, here we go. Uh oh. Uh, okay, I'm not going to answer the Jules Dean one because we spoke about that in depth earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to go back in the video. Yeah. Alex, I've per been performing your links for the past three weeks. They still sell that? <laughs> the first time I heard about it in six years. <laughs> well, I'm glad. How do you guys feel about the new generation of magicians primarily learning through the internet? It's fine. I don't see anything wrong with it. Do you have a problem, though, if someone's, let's say, teaching malice and how to make it? Yeah, because I'm yeah. marketing that. Yeah. But that's why I think that's probably what the question okay. more means um, with people teaching stuff. Like, you know, is it okay? I think it's okay to teach your own stuff. Mm. It is. It does get into a gray area when people are teaching things that are in books and stuff. Yeah that should be like even classic stuff and I have friends that have taught stuff on YouTube I do. and stuff I do yeah. I'm but one I, of them but okay so if you were to teach the past on, on YouTube but no well it's okay so I don't know I, I mean a yeah, lot of I people a, have, a lot of people have taught the past right? yeah but let's 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 do this let's look at a book right so there was a, a move by Jerry Andrus that I taught yeah. the panoramic shift before I taught the panoramic shift, I pulled out the Jerry Andrews book. Here's what the book is. Here's what you can find it. It's awesome. Here's where you can buy it. It's got some yeah. great stuff. Here's something from it. Yeah. And I taught one move from it. For sure. Right? And then I give all this crediting and all this other stuff. Yeah. The reason why I did that is because I've learned by doing this that there's a lot of people on YouTube who want to learn. They just don't know where to go. No, uh, for sure. For you sure. You know? And magic is no longer about secrets. That whole idea is out the window. The minute there was I a magic... I still have secrets. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> rehandcrafted.com. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the minute secrets. The minute magic became a business, it's not about secrets. It's about marketing. Yeah. If we wanted to keep the secrets, we wouldn't put it on YouTube. We wouldn't. Well, I get asked that question all the time. Is when I say to someone like uh, a layman, like I'm going to a magic convention or something, and they're like, "Whoa, isn't magic supposed to be secret?" Now these people are telling you their secrets and stuff. So I think to a layman, the magic industry is still about well, yeah. secrets, which, which is good, which is fine. Um, but yeah, and it's also about us to like portray that image too, because if I'm talking to a layman and um, they have no idea about the magic industry at all, when I say that I go travel and do lectures, right, I make it seem very mysterious of, you know, <laughs> going into you these secret, secret hangouts, right, yeah. Yeah. invitation only kind of place where, yeah. where it's secrets get passed on right sure. and uh and and that portrays the image of all right there's a mystery behind um, it but here's the thing do you see youtube it it's hit or miss for me i think i think there's good things that can come from youtube and people teaching so that it's more available to people you know, all around the world that may not have a library or whatever where they're living but at the same time if you go and do an effect to someone and then you see that person the next week and they're like I looked up your stuff on YouTube because someone revealed it on there to, you know that's where I have trouble with when people are revealing tricks on YouTube so, I agree with that yeah especially when they're doing it wrong yeah yeah that's the worst 
<laughs> Somebody called me. They said Xavier cringes when someone says laming. I do. Every time somebody says laming, I go. <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> now. I'm going to say layman with uh. every <laughs> with every sentence I have. I'm gonna talk about some layman. Uh, did I tell you the shirt I wanted to? So make? what do you tell them? Just hey guys, what do you call them? Regular ha- people? Oh uh, well, no, no, magicians. I, no, I just call them. Listen, what, if so, if you were to say show me a trick, I'm not gonna go. All right, well here's how I do it for layman. No, I'm just no, gonna show I you want you to show me a trick. But right. I think people so, understand that layman are people that don't. I don't under, do I, magic. I get it, but yeah. the term layman has been over, over, overused. So, okay, so what word should we use? For the rest of this live stream, what should we use? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I show those people, don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, I just... When you show those you know, don't people, you, those are the but best. But you know why I'm saying that. I know what you mean. Shitty magicians use layman as an excuse to do shitty magic. Yeah, no, That's, 100%. I, I'm using it in the vocabulary that I, we're I, showing regular I, people I, that I don't understand that. magic. I just hate the word. All right, well, I'm going to call right there. Don't people. Can somebody please design a shirt with a mathematical equation that says the number of times you say layman is the inverse number of times you actually perform for one? Ouch. I perform a lot. But now I'm going to say layman every sentence. <laughs> Just, just as you cringe. Mm-hmm. Is there any layman, I think somebody needs to do a t-shirt that just says, that has a picture of uh, some popular cardist, right? And then glorified fidget spinner. And just like, <laughs> like that. Someone, with a picture, of, said, with a picture of Sankey crying in the background. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, the winner of the contest. So I, I, I'm not going to do the contest now. There was just too many, too many issues trying to stream from... The shitty hotel on that. Jack so, Hart is I'm going for, to do some street performing. Sick. Good luck, man. Kill it. Fifty-five minutes. So, uh, we got about five minutes left. So I guess <laughs> this what person. We'll do. This person says we are all lame in one day. We just evolve. <laughs> Boom. I like that. Yeah, but you don't still call everybody babies. We evolved lame. We and grew. I call you a big baby all the time. Right now. <laughs> Uh, when Alex put his sunglasses on inside, I called him a big baby as well. <laughs> so we got about five minutes left, so let's just go straight for the questions. Okay, there was a question that you started to, you said, this is a good one, what do we all uh, feel about magic or something like that? I don't remember. But we, you started to say it and then we never got to the question. That's yeah, gone. Uh, so if that was your question, throw it down below so we can re-answer it, because it was a good question. Um, so just wrapping it up quickly, uh, since we are here in Vegas and everything, what did you take away from Magic Live? Oh, um, not, not as much as I thought. I hope to this time, uh, to be honest. Uh, I feel like the other conventions in the past I've taken more away from. Um, but with this one, I think, uh, I mean, doing your interview uh, at Magic Live was great. Uh, probably took more out of being in that room than I did for the oh, convention. Well, I'm uh, glad. And, I mean, we did an interview, and we did an interview with about, I'm sure you guys uh, that are at least are watching my Instagram have seen my photos of uh, two people, two magicians. We took two magicians, put them in a room, and just have them chat back and forth with each other. Um, so that's going to be coming soon uh, on, I think, my YouTube. By the way, the news is that I... Uh, Started a YouTube, He's my got own a YouTube. personal YouTube. Oh, whoa, hang I'll, on be adding, so, I'll be adding. I'll be adding. Hang on a second. Does ooh, that ooh. mean when I came tonight, I had more followers than him, and you were giving me beef? No, he has, he has six thousand. <laughs> he said he just started it. Well, I mean, He's it's me. starting it up again. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so so let's go. Everybody, so, uh, go follow Ari Handcrafted on YouTube. Do you want magic to come off as as magic or skill? I'm gonna say magic because that's why it's called magic. If I wanted it to be skill, it would be a poker demo or something yeah. like that. And see, that's why I feel like when flourishers do magic after flourishing, they've already showed that they have skill and it's less impressive, it's less magical. I would rather be that guy with the deck of cards that can no. handle a deck and then pulls off something incredible. Yeah, I think yeah, there's two ways to look at it because I think it's kind of cool to you know be slick with what you're doing too and have skill with what you're doing. But like if you take like no offense, Dan and Dave's Uzumaki, yeah, is not magic to me. Yeah. You're literally showing this flourish. Yeah, and you know 
it's not magic. I, I think there's 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 times for it where you can be fancy and you, you know. have to look throw, professional. Oh, sure. There's least, a time yeah. and place. Oh yeah, you have no. to look like you know what you're doing with the deck of cards. I'm not saying throw the deck on the be, ground and say pick a card. Yeah, but, rather but, than be like mm-hmm. Uncle Jim, right? Uncle Jim never knows how to hold a deck yeah, of cards, yeah. right? You don't want to be that. No. But at the same time, I like but I'm even saying if you I watch someone, flirt. if you're watching someone flourish for five minutes before they do a yeah, card trick, yeah, I know like three flourishes. Takes away the skill, right? Or it takes away the magic. And we all know that if you spring a deck of cards, wow, that's like you're already now someone yeah. different, right? And then when you go into a routine, I think it's up to you to say, look, and I can do all of this kind of stuff, right? And this has nothing to do with everything because you're gonna take the deck, you're gonna shuffle, and then yeah. go from there, right? I just think sometimes people will equate skill to what they just saw. Yeah, if go, you go really fast with it, if you go now, really, really fast, like yeah. with an ambitious card, I talk about this all the time, you keep doing it, put it in the middle, snap your fingers, go to the top, snap your fingers, and you just keep doing it. Yeah. 97 phases, right? It's like it gets to a point Minus where like, well, you must, now, but you must be really be fast with your hands. Yeah. And being really fast with your hands is, is for me, it's a, it's a fail if the spectator sees me as that. Yeah. So, no, for sure. Um, How do you feel about people going on fool us and not even trying to fool them with something new or creative? Mm. So, uh, um, see, I, I think I know I did fool us last year. I didn't get to put it on cam. I filmed it, but licensing issues because of what I used wasn't allowed. Mm-hmm. But I went on the show to fool Penn and Teller. Uh, my routine has fooled lots of magicians, so I thought, let's go for it. Let's try to fool them. I find it difficult when people go and do a store-bought magic trick that uh, you know they know is not going to fool them. I have trouble with that. I think, but I know that doesn't come from Penn and Teller. That comes from the producers, uh, and the producers tell you we want the most entertaining routine possible. We don't care if it fools Penn and Teller. Right. We want it to be entertaining because it makes good TV. So I understand it that way that it does make good TV and that it's still getting magic out yeah. mainstream. People are watching different levels of magic, different types of magic. So I do like that part. Now, especially now, probably the first couple of seasons, it was about fooling. Now yeah. it's a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this too. If Penn and Teller got fooled with every trick, it would be a terrible show. Right? Like if every trick they came up, someone came up and they're like, shoot, that's so new. We don't know what that is. You know, we don't know this. We don't know that. And I think that's why it came down to if we notice one thing about your trick, the trick is kibosh. You know, yeah. I think they had to do it that way because they are not able to explain everything that's done in every trick. So, can you answer my question about mouths? I want to try to be able to make some for myself. People make gimmicks all the time, just don't sell it. <laughs> you know, I think that's a fair answer. I think that's cool. Right. So, oh, it's talking about fool us. So, Blake Voigt. Vakit Voigt. Uh, he did a routine that would have fooled them, but all they said was, we seen what you did with paper years ago. They couldn't tell on the bill how it was done. Right. You know, they just knew that he's very good at splitting stuff. Um, does that, uh, and, and you know, he didn't fool them. Do you right. agree with that or not? To me, I would go, he fooled you because I, I you, fooled you don't too. know how it was done. Right. And they were like, well, we know the workings of the basic routine. Yeah. But that's the some, routine that's is some basic. Point of punch. Yeah. And the, but the basics was not that routine. You right. Know, that the gimmick is, the, is the, the new routine. Right. And his handling couldn't have been the same because he had to cover up things that before you wouldn't have had to cover up because right. it was done with a bill instead of a card and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But right? it's like, the, I mean, I guess it's the same thing of saying, like, oh, I don't know how your your hookup is for your invisible thread. I just know it's invisible thread. Yeah, but I think I think if it's something Did I like fool that. You? But I think uh. you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I see your point there as well. But I think like when it comes to something like that that hadn't been done before, you know, then it's not you're not just floating something with invisible thread. Right. Uh, so for my Instagrammers, there's a minute left on here. It's going to go off. But if you do want to rewatch this, it's going to be on Xavier's channel. Are we still uh, going on here? Yeah, we're going to go on here just for, for a few minutes. I'm going to put we, some stuff up so you guys we, can keep talking. Okay, we got like 900 minutes left, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. unlimited. Unlimited. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep... Here, can I move this? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to look through some questions to, to ask us. Uh, Xavier, stop. I think you're dope. Stop. I like your hat. Yeah, stop moving. 
You're dope. I like your hat. I touched something yeah. wrong. Dope. Hey, Alex, what do you use for your hair? <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't bathe for like four days. <laughs> it gets to the point where the actual residue in my yeah. hair becomes gel. The grease. So, no, I have, uh, I think it's, I think it's called uh, uh, Godspeed. Just don't tap, oh, I didn't tap. Sure. <laughs> Josh says, coolest thing you saw at Alex, Magic you're Live. Even dopier. Dopier? I think you meant doper, bro. Uh, <laughs> poor connection. What's your Instagram? A Pandrea. A Pandrea. Right, so we're off on my Instagram, but we're still live here. Yeah. This, uh, this guy said, "Do you really like?" Uh, it should be. Did you really? Did you really like Wizard Wars as an opportunity for magicians? Huh. With who was on Wizard Wars? You were on Wizard Wars. No, I consulted on Wizard Wars. Are you handcrafted? Yep. Um, so what do you think? Did you like Wizard Wars as an opportunity for magicians? No. Why or why not? I have not watched one single like episode of it. Or okay. Rather... So we're not going to answer that question. I'm really sorry. I think it was a good way for magicians to get out. I wish that maybe the... Um, uh, production level was a little stronger maybe uh, with some of the stuff on there but being a consultant on the show I know that like these guys had no time sometimes to get their stuff done uh, and it was pretty stressful so yeah um, let me see alright guys so you'll see some names below these two guys now that's their Instagrams go follow them on it oh yeah there we go I was like backwards I was like pointing <laughs> over here watch right now like, see if what? anybody does yeah like, so there we go so go follow them and on Instagram I can't get over to Pandrea I can't reach that far can you extend my arm what can you, you be want? my arm extension for what there it is <laughs> <laughs> to your name on the screen uh, oh. also I'll be putting Pandrea's uh, YouTube in the description so go subscribe to him okay this guy has asked a few times what is if it? we like Penn and Teller's Fool Us I don't anymore uh, I, I still find it somewhat entertaining I didn't watch last season because I was ticked that my stuff got uh, cut and then I saw some terrible magicians doing some terrible tricks that would never fool anyone um, that that I didn't like about it but I still watch the episodes sometimes. More, I don't watch them live. I'll watch them on YouTube if I have a friend on or something. Mm. Or on Instagram. Yeah. Or not Instagram, Facebook. If I, if I know someone that was on. Spade should do a, the pass with the Chris Angel deck. It hurts. It just hurts. Um, These guys' Instagrams are dope. Tucker, <laughs> thank you. All right, but we're going to take off. Uh, so I need to eat. Nice. Mm, yeah. So, so once again, go follow these follow guys on Instagram. How come I didn't get any because followers? You I, got a couple, eight followers. I got a couple. Wait, no, I'm going to take a look. Yo, make me look good. Go follow them. So oh, the grid, no. Bro. Hey, I got four. Oh, I got four. what? Yeah, boom. <laughs> boom. Oh, actually, I just got a donation. Oh, hey, holy stinks. Sound we... Johnny, thanks for the love, man. I appreciate it. Uh, There's not much. Uh, drinks since, on him. Drinks on me tonight. Two, do two dollars. We, we got a few followers. All in the last 18 seconds. Nice. So, yeah. So, give these guys some love. Make me look good. Yeah. Because we don't believe Xavier has friends. And, and, other than us. And if you want to see some great magic, go, go check out uh, Pandrea. If you want to see some Canadian stuff, you go, go see Ryan. <laughs> and also, we should just mention that I, I believe I'm teaching something on Chris Ramsey's channel tomorrow. Oh, is that tomorrow? Yeah. So there you go. So you're going to see his stuff on Pandrea's channel, so he'll be getting more subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy has eight. If you want, no, fuck, hey, look, look up, look up Ryan Edwards it. on YouTube is also. Is that what it is? I don't even know. I don't even know. Get, get him, if you can get him to 10. Yeah, if you can get me up to 10 <laughs> followers. I'm going to start posting videos for real next month. But there's some there's some show video on there. I'm going to start posting out. videos for real like this week. So That's not true. 100%. Look 100%. at my setup. Yo, now dude. I'm using it for that. Look, look at the drone. Look at the drone. I, I have a drone at home too. I gotta get you yeah. to help me get this set. I have no Although drone. My drone Let's fly like... the drone into the eclipse tomorrow. Boom. Come on. My drone though broke. The, uh, the thing inside that tells how fast the blade should go. 
it was sitting on my shelf and I go out to fly it the next time and I take it up and then it nosedived. I was like, what's going on? What? Uh, it said that the ESC uh, thing is busted, so I got to get it fixed. So <laughs> it's been sitting on my shelf for over a year now. But I have the, the Phantom 3 Pro, like 4K, like oh, yeah? good, good one. And yes, yeah, sitting on the shelf. I have, a, so. I have an iPhone. iPhones are pretty sweet. Which version? You know, there's, the a, four? there's a drone that you can put your iPhone in. And, like, I saw that. I, I actually just, just that. got a brand new phone because my phone got messed up. So oh. this is a new one. So you're at the 5 now. <laughs> no, I'm at, this is an SE. I'm just joking. I'm just messing with you. Oh. Just messing. It looks like it's a 3, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, okay, the best thing is before we started this, Pandrea goes, I'm going to shoot this on my iPhone for Instagram Live. And he goes, oh, hang on a second. I got a special mic for your iPhone. And he goes, wait, which version is that? The 7? Put the mic and away. And he put the mic away. <laughs> Just slowly. is is made for the 3 to, three to 5. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the, thanks, hot, thanks for the love, Lazarus. Anyway, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to jump in the pool. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. jumping in the pool except Brian. He didn't. Because someone didn't tell me to bring a bathing suit. Didn't tell me that I, there was going to be You can borrow fun. my watermelon shirts. <laughs> anyway. I also, have also shirts. we have to, before, so you're here for a couple more days. Mm -hmm. We're going to go check out this racquetball slash, there's actually a racquetball court and a squash court right next to it, but the, but the squash court is in construction until the 24th, which I think Damn, is the day you the leave. Day I leave yeah. So we, hey. if we could find rackets, we're going to have to do some sort of, of you Challenge. kicking my ass on racquetball because I've time. literally never played rock racquetball in my life. I wish I, I think could that play. shit is just like bouncing all over the place. I can't, like, yeah, can't, the yeah, oh, I can't back, run yeah. and stretch and stuff. Yeah, not for another. Well, technically, I can't run and stretch either. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna hit it so hard <laughs> you can't get I, it. I don't. I think even <laughs> if I hit it hard, what though, do you think I'll is gonna be like happening? Squash. He, he, see, here's the thing. I'll break you in squash so Here's the thing. I know. I know. I'm not athletic. Yeah. But I have court sense, and. This is like, and I hit so hard literally, as shit. we gotta so, do this on the day of like Mayweather, or whatever yeah, fight, that's right? A 20, that's a 26. Literally, and start putting bets, like literally on, on cards, right? We I'm give done. away cards yeah, yeah. or whatever. So you give away a bunch of products, I give away a bunch of products, and we do a whole thing. <laughs> I'm done. Let's do it. it would done. Be, Let's do it. It would be actually pretty funny. So we had a, we played a game last time I was with Pandora. We played um, the last mad mess, the last magic life. We played uh, cut. No, no, no. Oh. We, we did dead cutting uh, with um, Mnemonica. And we, what we should have done is put money on it and oh, gambled, man. like, how many cards you're off, you lose that much money Ooh, or whatever. Ooh, that's good. But, that is uh, good. But shuffleboard, we, are you down? We got to go. Yeah, I'm down. It's so addicting. I'm Pool down. first. So addicting. Pool. All right, guys. Let's go, ladies. Food and shuffleboard. All right, we're done. So peace out, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Peace. Thanks for the love and uh, peace out. This is the shit that I be talking about. You think you can dance?